Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for a learning and growing webinar on increasing retention through high impact practices in your online class. Our presenter today is Teresa Buzo Salas of Georgia Southern University. My name is Sidra and I'll be your moderator today for Hawks Learning. We will have a live Q&A session after the presentation, so please enter any questions you have into the Q&A module as we go and we'll be sure to answer them at the end. I'll now hand it over to our presenter. Hello, everyone. Um, well, I'm going to share with you the PowerPoint that I have created for this presentation. Um, it's called en Enhancing Student Rotation in Online Courses. Um, well, uh, as she mentioned, um, my name is Teresa Busasalas. I'm a Spanish instructor at Georgia Southern University. I teach online courses. I contribute to the online teaching committee. Um, I have been collaborating on the design of online Spanish courses since I started teaching, and I'm certified in quality matters for online instructor instruction. Um, so today uh, we are going to explore strategies to improve student retention rates by implementing high impact uh, practices. Um, as you know, um, enrollment in online classrooms are increasing. Uh, research indicates that the enrollment in online courses uh, continues to grow annually, even in the post-pandemic era. Now, a significant number of students are opting to take at least one class online, or even more. But also, the downside about this situation is that at the same time that they are increasing the number of online courses, uh, there is a significant dropout rate in online instruction uh, that it's, more, it's higher uh, compared to the traditional face-to-face -face, uh, classroom settings. Uh, for, for example, in my classes, I teach Spanish and in my elementary Spanish class, uh, usually there is like 5% of students who decide to drop the class in the face-to-face -face setting. But in, a, in the online, the exact same class, the percentage usually is around 30, 40, and even 50%. So why that is happening? Why is happening? Um, well, let's see what are the factors that contribute to that uh, increase in numbers of a student who decide to drop out the class. So what are those factors? There are many, but I'm, I'm just going to highlight the main ones. One is the technological challenges, okay? And then we are gonna go with explaining one by one. So one would be uh, technological issues, limited social interaction, perceived lack of support. And it's very important to keep in mind that verb perceived, not just lack of support because obviously we are all very engaged in our classroom and we are all trying to do our best to support our student, uh, but it's the perception that sometimes the student have. The type of content that we provide, um, the motivation and discipline. So let's go one by one to see those factors. So technology challenges. Um, I know that many of you may be thinking, well, I'm a professor, I'm an instructor, I'm a teacher, but I don't work in the IT services, right? <laughs> that, is, that is a feeling that sometimes we have when we are working in online classroom. And obviously we don't expect that uh, the professor needs to know everything about all the different platforms that we are working with, um, all the different issues that a student may have, you know, uh, but still, we need to be able to provide that information, that technical support. And how can we do that? By providing them with online tutorials, and the information about where they can find the health care services, the, um, uh, and all the information about all the uh, dedicated IT staff in the different platforms. Also offering orientation and training. 
Uh, in my courses, for example, in the, the first module is about that, uh, just about, I always provide different tutorials, um, just about how they need to navigate through the, uh, through the, the course, the, the D2L, the different platform, because I, we work with different platforms as well, with ebook. And after they watch the tutorials, obviously they have to complete a quiz. So I make sure that they have watched the tutorial they know how to what they have to do to navigate correctly where every all the assignments are located. Um, so that is a very important factor in an online class. Encourage communication is also very important. Um, not just like one one interaction with instructor, but also encourage communication between students and their peers. So we can create for example, a discussion forum about technological issues where students can have each other. So the students don't need to depend just about our, uh, ourselves, but also they can uh, help each other. And at the same time, and we are gonna talk about that a little bit later, but at the same time, we are creating that sense of community that are, is gonna help students to interact in the class in a more effective way. And finally, uh, be flexible. Uh, and I know that many times a student may take advantage of some situation, the situation of I have this, I have this test, but I have some problem with my internet connection. I have some technical issue with the platform and I could not complete my test on time. That's very common. So sometimes it's very hard for an instructor to find a balance between be flexible and be fair with the rest of the students. Um, but again, again, we need to keep in mind what, what is our goal? Is our goal um, to be fair, <laughs> which is, is, it should be one of our goals, obviously, but also one goal that we have to keep in mind is retention. If a student, uh, miss an assignment because some technological difficulties, because some um, internet issue connection, and they don't submit their assignment on, on time, and they get a zero in that very first assignment, that student may decide just to drop the class because they nobody wants to start with a class with a zero. Or they may be thinking that they may have that the same issue in the future, and they don't want to end up with another zero. So if our goal is to, to retain students, they need to be aware that we are here to help them out, that we are very flexible in that regard, and we can stand the line, give them opportunities. And, and sometimes it may be, you know, we may, they may take advantage of that. Um, so it is really hard to balance. Uh, I always tell my students that they need to make sure that they take the test or those important assignments uh, not just write the, the day before the, the deadline because some technological issue may happen, but right before that, yet still we are going to have that problem. There are going to come students who wait until the last minute or who just take advantage and, and just uh, give that, that excuse. But again, just be flexible is a good way to return a student in all our, our, our online courses. Uh, another factor that we were talking about um, was limited social interaction. And we are going to talk a little bit more in deep about this because this is a really important part that why students decide to drop uh, on, in online courses. So what we can do to have more social interaction in the online setting by creating group projects, discussion forums, virtual peers activities, interactive webinars or live session, uh, social media or online communities, peer feedback, and instructor presence and engagement. And now we are gonna talk a little bit more about some of these um, way to help a student to interact with one another. So it's very important in an online class to foster in a sense of community, create opportunities uh, for collaboration and peer interaction. So how we can do that? By uh, incorporate uh, interactive elements such as discussions, 
virtual study sessions, group projects, and other type of activities where they need to interact with one another. And they can do that asynchronously. Uh, so for example, for online discussion forum, that allows students to engage in conversation. Uh, you can post a question and they need to create some type of discussion or they even can create those questions and um, discuss with one another, but not just in a written form, it could be also in a form of a video. They can post some videos, it could be the form of an audio. So I also assigning group projects, like when students work in group projects, uh, normally it's very effective if you really want to create that sense of community. And we don't need to expect a student to know each other, all, all of them. Like if we, if we have a class of 100 students, they don't need to know each other. But just if they know like three, four, five students, because they have been working together, um, because they have been doing some type of projects, that is going to create the sense of community and they are going to feel more engaging in the online course. Um, also, then also it's also very important to uh, provide feedback. Um, the feedback, um, it creates the feeling for the student that is somebody there <laughs> who are helping them in their learning process. And the feedback can be, it can be provided in two different ways. It can be like an immediate feedback. Um, uh, when a student, for example, uh, complete a quiz and it's like an auto-graded quiz and they uh, see the result immediately, it, it, that creates that a student feel like engaged and motivated. It's like, oh, I, I got a 90 or I got an 80 or oh, I, my grade wasn't really good. So now it could be the time for a student if, if, he, if he or she had a really bad grade to contact you and have that interaction with the professor of if the student got a really good grade in that, in that situation that create, like the student get very engaged and motivated in the class. So feedback is very important, but not just like an immediate feedback. It's really important to personalize feedback. Um, especially because when the students see that the professor is uh, helping them in a really good uh, fashion, timely manner, the student feel like uh, there is somebody there who is paying attention to their assignments. Because sometimes students feel like in a class, we, we may create like a really good, good class. The design of the class can be really good, very easy to navigate really great activities, but sometimes the students feel like uh, there is no one there, like uh, they are just they are just there on their computer. Uh, so giving them like uh, a, a feedback on time is gonna help them to feel that there is somebody there who is there to help them. And um, it's gonna be more effective for them to seek help if they feel like there's uh, somebody there that are willing to help. So giving them the proper feedback on time, because if you, feel, if you give them a feedback after two, three, four weeks, that feedback is not gonna be as effective. They are gonna feel that like there is no one there who are really paying attention to their, um, to their work. So that is a good way to uh, keep them engaged in the class. Um, also, um, another factor is about the content. We talk about how this content can be. I, I am teaching two Spanish classes, exactly the same level. One is face-to-face, -face, traditional way, and the other one is online. And the content for both of them is, is the same, but the way that it's presented is completely different. It's totally different. Um, we need to keep in mind that the students who are taking the online class is not taking just maybe our, our class, maybe taking another online classes. Um, besides that, those this student in the era that they are uh, they were born and they are growing up, it just with a computer are they served. So they are with the in front of the screen all the time. Uh, we cannot give them like a lot of material to read because they are not gonna read. They are visual people. They are used just to watch 
um, videos. So we need to take advantage of that. It's, it's, there is nothing negative about watching videos, uh, videos versus reading material. It's just a different way to present the content. So in, it, it, in this way, it's going to be more effective. So we need to use that. Uh, so by incorporating educational videos, um, can um, can bring content to life adapted to different learning styles. Uh, so I don't just want to talk about Spanish because that is my <laughs> that is my speciality, but also uh, I can give you some examples in a different discipline. For example, in a history lesson about World War II uh, could include archival footage, interviews with historians, and animated maps to provide a comprehensive understanding of the topic, for example, okay? And also creating animations. That is something that I use a lot in my courses, for example, because our student needs, uh, the online student needs to watch a lot of tutorials. And sometimes there are some grammar concepts that can be a little bit complex, especially in the higher levels. So uh, through animation, they usually uh, simplify those concepts in a way that is very easy for them to understand the, 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 the grammar point as a whole. Or for example, in a science class, an animation demonstrating the water circle or cell division can aid the student to grasping these concepts more effectively as well. Um, visuals and infographics. Visual aids such as, such as infographics and diagrams help clarify complex information and improve retention. So the content that we need to create in the online course, it may be kind of different to the courses, uh, to, the con to the content that we create in the traditional face-to-face. -face. Um, uh, engagement um, also with the, with the content. Uh, it, this is uh, very similar with the factor that we saw before about the limited social interaction and the type of content we need to have like an interactive element, for example, quizzes. Incorporating quizzes at strategic points in a lesson encourage active recall and helps reinforce learning. So um, in an online course, not just the material, but the way that we distribute the material, uh, the way that we distribute the, the assessments are going to be different than the way that we do in the traditional class. In a traditional class, we may have like a huge important final test that may worth 40% of the final grades. But that is not very recommendable in an online class. In an online class, we may, we may provide more like small, short quizzes throughout the semester rather than like a big final test. Uh, they are gonna be more, in, more engaged in that way. They are gonna recall the information better. Um, somehow it's, it could be a little strategy to prevent some cheating that as you know is easier in the online environment than in the face-to-face. -face. Uh, also discussions, as we talked before, online discussion forum or in class debates promote critical thinking and collaboration among students. So always create interactive elements. So the content needs to be just very visual, through videos, through infographics, through animation, and very interactive. Um, oh, here is an example about um, my face-to-face -face class. Uh, oh, the, well, it's the online class and my face-to-face -face class. It's exactly the same class, it's a Spanish elementary class. And as you can see, the assignments, the weight of the assignments are completely different. Um, so for example, you can see the homework, our exams in the, in the, um, Online is at twenty percent. Uh, in the face to face is forty five percent. So the weight is completely different. We have in the online recorded oral practice, uh, which is at twenty percent. We don't have that assignment in the in the face to face. However, we have a composition 
and we don't have a conversation in the online. So the weight of the assignments, the type of assessments are different. Even we want to achieve the same uh, learning outcomes. Mm, we need to keep that in mind when we design our online courses. As I told you before, another factor that 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 uh, why some students decide to drop um, the uh, the online class is the perception or lack the lack of support. Okay, again, it's a perception. I know that all the structure are there are trying to help the student as much as possible. Uh, try to create a assessment that really you know address the main points of the content, try to do their best, but sometimes students don't feel that way. They just see uh, online course that they don't even think about who created that course and they don't see that interaction with the instructor. So we, we, what we can do, first thing that is really important is to create the sense of presence. Like this is the professor, and, and I know who's, who he or she is. It's very important to include pictures of yourself. It's very important to create small videos where you can not just introduce yourself, but also talk about the course, about what are the objectives of the course. Uh, you can talk about the syllabus. Um, sometimes I feel like when I uh, record myself to give them some instructions, it's more about try to connect with the students, try to uh, tell them that I'm here and if they need any help, I'm here to help, more than just explain the content. Uh, most of the time I don't even explain anything because everything is already explained through tutorials. Um, but, I, but I always want to make sure that I am there to practice the oral skills with me or to or if they have any question about the grammar or about the vocabulary that I'm there to help them out or about any activities that they may have or they may be confused. So just including those small videos, uh, it, it should not be very long because you know they, they are not very patient in watching videos for a long time. It's just like a two, three minutes video give them some instruction, encouraging them. Sometimes that is very effective. Sometimes I just record myself saying, you guys did very good. The tests were, you guys, most of you got a really good grade. And sometimes that encouraged those students who didn't do their work on time to contact me and say, hey, I know that you say that may, most of the students did great, but I have this problem I didn't do on time. Can I submit my work? Um, you know, it's an opportunity to, you know, that student that came to you to say yes and be flexible and give them the opportunity and somehow to retain that student in your class because this, that is the objective that we have in mind to retain those, those students in online classroom. So they are sometimes more prone in watching the video than just reading emails, than just uh, reading announcements in the class. Uh, videos are very effective. Um, again, you can create a present synchronously or asynchronously. Uh, synchronously, for example, if you say, hey, I'm gonna be on Zoom on Tuesday at five. If you have any question, if you want to practice Spanish with me, I'm gonna be there. Or, you know, this is my office hour. I'm gonna be always on Zoom at this time, this day of the week, you can come here and practice with me. Or you just make record yourself and, you know, post those videos in a way that they can watch it anytime, anywhere. So I do both. I do the synchronous presence and the synchronous, and it really is really effective. Another way is just to be very accessible instructor. If they say, well, I am, you know, try to be flexible with your schedule. Try to be there when they need it. Of course, we are not there 24 seven, that's impossible. We have a life, right? And we have so many things to do and we are busy. Um, but if a student contact you, uh, try to, um, try to uh, respond in a really, um, timely manner because otherwise it may be a student who are thinking in continuing the class, just drop the class. So that email on time 
may, you know, may, may help them and just keep them in the classroom. Uh, the same with responsive feedback, um, peer support network. As I said before, if you create those activities that are engaging, that uh, create a sense of community where students can talk to one another through discussion forum, group projects, that is going to create that perception of support. So um, they may finish that that online class say well it was an online class but i met a wonderful uh, people wonderful classmates i made my structure many times i feel support so that is gonna it's gonna be a feeling completely different if we don't follow you know these uh, um advices okay and um, finally motivation and discipline <laughs> and you can see in one picture uh, somebody who is in front of the computer doing some type of playing with their pencils and, and we can see another picture is somebody praying that's that's a person who is praying is the professor who is thinking please please go and log in Sometimes there is nothing that we can do. You know, sometimes if the student don't go to the classroom, they don't log in, if they don't see any videos, they don't see anything, there is nothing that we really can do. That is something that happened with online students, face-to-face students. Most of the time it's more common with online students because uh, they just, they just, forgot that they have a class there that they need to log in and they need to see and, and you know, <laughs> work. Uh, but in that regard, or we just can do just pray. <laughs> um, and that's all for now. And now is the time for question and answer uh, if you guys have some questions for me. Go ahead and use either the chat functionality or the Q&A module to enter any questions you have heard today, so. We have one question. How do you encourage students to turn on their cameras? Oh, yeah. Well, that is, that is a really good question. Yes, that is always that I, I always tell them it's a requirement. Let's say just did it just a requirement. When in in my first module where they have to know and go through all the different videos and all the different quizzes uh, to know how the class work, one of the questions is in uh, one of the quizzes. Uh, I always include that they are required to have the camera on. And I always explain why, because it's very important for them to know why is the reason. The reason is we are in a class, it's online, and sometimes it's really hard to, it, it, I mean, it's, it's just more easy and friendly if we can talk, see one or uh, another face. Uh, we can see our gesture, we can see who we are. I can recall, I can recall uh, your face and connect it with your name. So I always tell a student that um, even we are in online class, we need to see each other. Um, we need to hear each other. Um, so uh, it's, it's just a requirement. And when they are all in the class, uh, because sometimes we have um, some type of discussion in a synchronous way. Um, I always remind them at the beginning that they need to uh, to turn uh, the camera on because there are few people who forget. There are other things besides that. Like I have like a, a list of policy that they need to follow. Uh, one is the, to have the camera on. Another one is, for example, they need to get dressed in the exactly same way that if they are going to a classroom. Um, it may be, you may be thinking, why is that? Well, in so many occasions, <laughs> so many occasions, so many classes, there were some students who were not very appropriate, like with no shirts or, you know. So I always tell them that they need to feel like a they, 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 they are there, like, they, they are in a classroom. They can no smoke, for example. They can no be there at the same time they are driving. Um, uh, sometimes I don't even allow them to eat. Like, uh, if, for example, it's just like an explanation by my part, 
I let them eat. But if, for example, is a, um, we are having a conversation, like practicing Spanish skills, an oral activity, I don't let them because it's very, you know, uncomfortable be talking and eating and see you eating while you're talking. It's, 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 yeah. So I, I just create like a policy list and I make sure that they know that they have to follow. Thank you. What time limit would you put on short video presentations for the class? Uh, for short video presentation, I, I will say like a, no more than four or five minutes. Okay. Thank you. How do students uh, collaborate and communicate with each other for group work? Well, they normally, we do like a, a discussion activities. Um, in my D2L, I create like a question where uh, normally they're talking about cultural topics. Um, I tell them that they need to pose a question, but also they need to answer two questions from their peers. So in that way, they can contact, uh, they can communicate with one another. Um, also, uh, I create an activity where they need to post a video of themselves uh, talking and asking questions. Normally, it's always a, by asking questions because that is that's very effective because that creates the opportunity for their peers to respond to those questions. So they their peers need to uh, respond to two classmates. And that creates that sense of community among them. Thank you. Do you ever have issues with students not engaging with their groups? If so, how do you deal with that issue? Some students who are engaged may feel very frustrated. Yes, yes, and that is really an issue, uh, especially because um, uh, if I try, don't uh, I try that the student work at least with three or four people, never two, because if one of them is not engaging in the class, the other one get like, what can I do? But if they are in group like a three, four people, no, no very large group because it's very large. It also create a problems when they need to schedule their times. Okay, so always keep in mind minimum three people, always minimum three people, maximum five people. So at least there are gonna be two people who are gonna be able to interact with one another. So they are not gonna get frustrated if the the rest of the student are not participating. And of course, create uh, projects that are fit for those two people. What I mean is like, for example, if two other people are not engaging in the group, it's not, it's not gonna be detrimental of the quality of the project. Um, you know, ju you just need to see in your own field how it may work. In my field, for example, where they need to meet each other weekly for conversation, they have to record themselves uh, talking with each other, practice the language with each other. Um, it's very effective. They can just take turn and ask questions and, and, uh, and then answer those questions. Um, but always keep that in mind, minimum three, maximum five, it should not be an issue. Thank you. This person teaches on co online college algebra courses and students want to complete assignments before they completed their lessons. Any suggestions on how to motivate them to do the lesson work first so that the assignment outcomes are better? But one thing what you can do is just, for example, uh, work with those deadline in a way that you just set the setting in a way that they can not submit their uh, assignments uh, in a in a in a certain time. So, for example, if they have to work um, during a week and the assignments is on Sunday, they cannot access that test until Sunday. So, just make sure that you just adjust those settings so they cannot go through and complete it before um, they should do. It. Thank you. Uh, one last question. Uh, when an instructor has possibly 80 or more students over several online classes, how can the instructor get to know each student, remember their names, etc., the way they are able to with face to face classes? With that, that's that's very difficult. It's very difficult um, 
to remember their, their faces and their names. Normally, I, I, I have a hard time remember all of them and connecting with their faces. Uh, I have like, a, for example, my enrollment list and here in Georgia Southern, we have the enrollment list with their faces, um, with their pictures next to, next to their names. Uh, um, what I do is just at the beginning of the semester, I print that out and I have in my office always with me. Uh, but, but still, it's still, it's sometimes it's hard to remember because you don't have that interaction. Normally you ended up uh, remembering the one that contacted you the most, the one that you have more interaction, but there are going to be always on a student, especially those who use nicknames, that is going to be hard to remember for sure. Thank you. We have two additional questions. How do you deal with students, uh, with student created videos to create closed captioning for ADA compliance? Um, well, I, I, I don't know how to answer that because since uh, my field is Spanish, uh, normally they just need to create the video um, in, and, and, and they don't create like caption for that because that would be very complex for them. Um, so they, they don't, they just don't, they don't do it. So I don't know, I don't know, I guess I'm different in, the areas they should do that so it could be effective for those students who really need to watch the caption but since i don't have experience with that i don't know sorry about that no worries uh one last question how do you manage digital distractions oh it's it is it that is a really good question too because sometimes students are there in supposedly in the class and you can see that they are actually not engaging in the class. That happened exactly the same in a face-to-face -face class. And sometimes it's very obvious to see that the student is not really engaged. What we can do is just the traditional way, just to call out the student, <laughs> to say, hey, now it's your turn. Um, but just remind them uh, from time to time, tell them, hey, we are here in the class, you are supposed to be engaged in the class. Make sure that you don't have your cell phone with you. Make sure that you are, you know, practicing your material. Um, just remember from time to time, um, I think that it could be effective. There are gonna be always students who are not. And I can tell you guys many different experiences that I have been through <laughs> during my online courses. Um, but I think that just remind them from time to time, it's a good way. Just, just in a in a nice way, polite way. Um, sometimes even you call out a student with a smile. A student normally, you know, it, they know what they are doing and they are fine with that. So as as as, as long as we are nice with them, uh, it should be fine. Thank you. Well, that looks like all the time we have for questions for today. Thank, thank you, Teresa, and thank you all for attending today. We will be emailing you a link to view the recording of this webinar once it's available. If you or any of your fellow instructors are interested in presenting for our Learning and Growing webinar series, please submit your proposals to the Learning and Growing website, which I'm going to link in the chat now for easy access. These free webinars are brought to you by Hawks Learning, an innovative educational course for company. To learn more about our mastery-based course materials and how Hawks can enhance learning outcomes for you and your students, please visit hawkslearning.com and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. I'm going to go ahead and close out the webinar now. Okay. Working with you. Thank you. Bye.